I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and welcome to the drive home to Hawkesbury where I believe every home has a story and I love sharing those stories on real estate in the Hawkesbury with you. Here we share the best ways to add value to your property, how to avoid the common mistakes people make when buying and selling property and how to get the maximum return on your investment with a focus on supporting local business. I live love Hawkesbury and can't wait to get into today's episode with you so let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. I'm Rachel Goldsworthy, and I'm on the drive home to Hawkesbury, joined by Councillor Sarah Richards. How are you, Sarah? I'm really good, Rachel. How are you today? Yeah, really well, thank you. I do apologise to the people that have been waiting online for us. We have had a bit of a delay in regards to um, internet, so uh, sometimes when the wind is blowing the wrong way, we can get uh, bumped off. So apologise to everybody that's watching, but thank you very much for everyone being patient. Uh, so tell me, Sarah, what's it like being a counsellor? Mm -hmm. I love being a counsellor. Um, to me, as someone who's worked in the community and in the not-for-profit sector um, for many, many years, it's a great way for me to be able to be involved in other aspects of the community and actually be able to take things to the chamber um, to get voted on where they actually can be implemented and make changes to our community. So I've had some initiatives since being elected that I'm really proud of and um, to me, it makes sure that you've got that voice and that ability to actually make positive change. No, that's terrific. And we met many years ago at one of the first Hawkesbury uh, Rotary meetings that I went to we when did. we were first starting out in the yeah. Hawkesbury and it was fantastic. And you're, I yeah. believe, still involved with Rotary um, in some yeah. scale? I am, um, yes. Yeah. So we met about eight years ago through Hawkesbury Rotary, which was a breakfast club. Um, which meant getting up very early and dragging my little kids along with me to those meetings. Um, but now I am a, I'm still a member, um, this time of Currajong North Richmond Rotary, although um, their meetings are on Tuesday nights and so are all of my council commitments. So um, I'm unable to actually get along to uh, many of those meetings now because of that Tuesday clash, uh, but I do try and get along to um, other things if I can. Yeah, it's hard to be everything to everybody and I think that it's um, it's difficult sometimes to get to all of the meetings but at the end of the day you're a great community advocate and you're doing a good job at what you are doing so thank you. Thank you, thank you. So yeah. just one minute Rachel, I've got a delivery yeah. man who's just turned up at our door so um, <laughs> sorry I'm just telling you. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, there's, a, there's Sarah, one I mean, life a reality. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Your life is a reality indeed. Yeah. Um, and tell me, what is a day like in the life of Sarah Richards? What do you do? Yeah. What do you get up to? Okay, so the day always starts with the kids. Um, got three little ones, two girls and a little boy. Um, so getting them ready, dressed for school, lunch is packed, off to school by 8.30 is always the start to my day, or weekdays anyway. Um, weekends is always around sport, netball, soccer. Uh, things like that. So uh, once my once they're taken care of at school during the day, that's when I fit in all of my other commitments. I try to fit them in between the school hours, although I am out, I uh, try to keep it about three nights a week as well with other commitments. Um, so a day would involve uh, meeting with residents, talking to residents, answering emails, um, and also meetings with my other charities that I'm on the boards of as well. Um, organising um, fundraising events, doing all that sort of stuff. Um, so it's, I never really get a day off. I've always got some commitments during the day, <laughs> usually centred around the community. So um, yeah. it keeps me busy and honestly, it's my passion and it's what I love. No, terrific. As I say, I've always known you to be a big community advocate and you're involved in so many boards and community organisations as you do. Yeah. Um, so what is a council for those people that are watching? What's involved? What do you have to yeah. do um, when yeah. you go to the meetings? Those sorts of things. Yeah, sure. Um, so just to explain people, when you say you're a councillor, you always have to clarify that that means you're an elected representative in local government um, and not somebody that uh, people go and um, explain their, their life issues to. So you have to always clarify with that. Um, but being a councillor is um, in the Hawkesbury, we have one LGA, there's no wards. So it's one group of 12 councillors. Uh, the 12 of us sit in chamber um, we debate things, we have business papers where the staff provide us with reports and recommendations to vote on things for the community. Um, a lot of that used to involve uh, planning and DAs, but uh, those um, actually go now to what's called an IHAP, which is an independent hearing and assessment panel where we have professional people with a uh, background in planning who actually decide those sorts of things. So we are more focused on community aspects, um, 
not things don't just happen in the chamber. We also have a range of committees that councillors also sit on that meet regularly throughout the year. Um, I'm on quite a few of those committees, uh, waste management, um, human services advisory committee where I get to be involved in affordable housing initiatives, which is something that's passionate to me, and also looking at the homeless issue. Um, I'm on I'm council's representative on the Hawkesbury Sports Council, which I absolutely love, um, and that goes for the whole four-year term. Um, so we meet additionally once a month um, on a Monday night to actually uh, talk about the sporting grounds and make sure the facilities are up to date um, and they've got amenities um, on the ground and things like that to make sure that our local kids and actually adults alike actually have really good sporting facilities because I'm always a big advocate for sport and the benefits socially and physically that that brings. No, absolutely. I'm exhausted just thinking about all of those things in your day. <laughs> <laughs> well, to I've got a lot of you. help. Uh, people help me um, <laughs> and the kids actually love it and they they love what mum does and sometimes there'll be an odd meeting, you know, 3.30 or 4 o'clock of an afternoon and there's quite a few of us counsellors who do have young kids and we might just have to bring them along to the chamber, not a proper council meeting but a committee meeting or something um, or a residential meeting, bring them along to the chamber. They know the room that they need to go in with a big whiteboard yes. and uh, they behave while we do that. So, you know, they've become accustomed to doing that as well. Um, it's become part of their life really as well, knowing what mum does. No, that's yeah. great. And yeah. essentially you are a mum and you are a counsellor, but I guess yeah. when things in, get involved locally, we're very passionate about what we do and so forth. But I guess too yeah. with messages that come across when you've got to deliver good news and not so good news to people, it's not always an easy task to do. How do you no. manage that? And, um, you know, mm. have you noticed that there's been anything that's happening lately that may be affected by that or some people yeah. are um, feeling that way? Absolutely. The biggest thing in our community right now, and it's at both ends of our community in Oakville and also Gross Vale, Currajong area, is the corridor announcement by the state government that happened a few weeks ago. Um, that has probably been the most predominant issue of late, other than probably the rate rise, um, which is something we can talk about later if you like. Um, so Absolutely. the corridors, yeah, the corridors <laughs> have caused anxiety. I understand mm. that. Um, a lot of uncertainty in the community. Um, especially with people where the corridor has gone through their home or their property, but not only that, those adjacent to it as well. Um, mm. So I've been working behind the scenes, looking at other ideas and ways and pathways a corridor could take. Also speaking to people, um, asking them if a corridor is necessary at all. Um, and also making sure that in any discussion that involves corridors, um, where I'm taking feedback directly back to Dominic Perrottet, Stuart Ayres and the state government, is that uh, we actually do get a third crossing of the Hawkesbury River. Um, no matter what political party or where you stand, we all are agreed and united on the fact that we do need another crossing of that river um, to actually help alleviate some of the traffic concerns. And we do need a significant infrastructure investment in the Hawkesbury. So um, while I'm taking that corridor feedback back to the state government, um, I'm also letting them know do not take a third crossing or another bridge off the agenda because that is extremely important. Um, but something I do want to make um, known to everybody who may not or have been following what council's doing, because this is a state government initiative, it's nothing that council can have any power to stop or put forward. But at our last council meeting, we did come up with a 12 nil uh, resolution moving forward on the corridors to show the community that we've listened to them and we're behind them. Um, and that council unanimously agrees that um, we need to actually come up with a better solution uh, than the one that has been put forward. And I can absolutely confirm that the state government has listened to that. Dominic's listened to that. He is holding forums today at his office in um, at the university campus at Richmond, separate ones for the M9 and also for the um, Bell's Line of Road corridor. And consultation, this is a consultation period. I can't stress that enough. Um, that finishes on the 1st of June. And from that point, the government will look at all of those submissions and then give, um, hopefully come up with some Sort of an announcement or an outcome based on all of that data. Oh, terrific. And in regards to that, with people that are watching and don't know where those roads are going, where's pretty much yeah. the start point that's proposed for the corridor for Bell's Line of Road and also um, the M9 or X9? Well, the Bell's, which people... Yeah, the Bell's Line of Road corridor um, connects to the Castle Road corridor, which is something that has the initial one had been gazetted. Um, I think it's since 1951. It, uh, oh, it's not, not gazetted, sorry, actually drawn on a map. Um, so people sort of 
had bought property or made decisions in their lives based on where they thought that was going to be. The current proposal deviates from that. It crosses the river um, at Castle Ray and then comes up, um, when you look at the map, um, quite far left of Bell's Line of Road up through Gross Vale. So, um, and then it, it tunnels underneath Currajong Heights and connects to Bell's Line of Road from there. Um, with the M9 orbital, um, it goes through Shane's Park, Marsden Park, and then connects up to Oakville, but it does stop um, at a certain point there with plans in the future to connect it to the Central Coast. Mm -hmm. um, although where it stops now, um, it sort of not isn't giving anyone any certainty about where it's going to go from that point on. So um, I know that a lot of people have taken those concerns direct to tra uh, transport for New South Wales, and I've taken them direct mm -hmm. to Dominic as well. Um, so the only thing I can stress, like I've said all along, is just keep emailing, sending your letters in, or by the 1st of June, that mm -hmm. is the cutoff date, and um, the government will definitely be assessing from there uh, what mm -hmm. they can do to try and come up with something better for the community. Yeah, absolutely. You make some good points there. And I think the Bell's Line of Road Corridor Action Group, they've organised for submissions to be written. And I know that you're in support of submissions to being written. Um, and obviously you would be available to help people if they needed some support. Yes. And you've been active in yeah. that group as well, I understand. I have. So uh, people in that group, I'm very active on Facebook. So people in that group tag my name so that it highlights to me that they've yes. got a question. And I go on and I answer those questions and I'm engaging um, with people all of the time as much as I can. Um, I'm emailing people, they're emailing me, um, contacting me via phone. I give out my private number to people all the time because it's usually the one that's in my back pocket. Um, the council one's usually in my handbag. So I'm more than happy for people to contact me on my private number. I don't have any barriers in that regard and I just want to make myself as available to people as I can. And that's what we love about you, Sarah. You are available for people. You are accessible. You do answer your phone. She messages back very quickly and she's always been a great community advocate. So we do appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I try my best, although at some circumstances I do have to put the phone down and actually maybe do some homework with the kids. So, <laughs> you know, try and balance. It's all about balance, right? <laughs> well, that's right. You are a good yeah. mum too. Those three beautiful children as well oh, um, so that lots of responsibility for you but um, I'm going to ask you a couple of hard questions and maybe they're not yes. hard questions but there's certainly okay. things that have been raised in the community with the people that I've been speaking to and the, the sure. acquisition process for the mm. corridor um, yeah. 200,000 barrier for mm -hmm. people you know if they're looking yeah. at purchasing a property if they're wanting to sell mm -hmm. their property if they want to add value yeah. to their property there's questions around mm -hmm. whether they should or whether they shouldn't what's your opinion in regards to that? Yeah, so that's absolutely valid. And we had that discussion about the $200,000 cap on DAs in council at our last meeting and our general manager addressed a lot of those concerns. Um, so if a corridor does get gazetted, um, if you are in that pathway, you will have a limit um, up to $200,000 on putting in DAs or development applications uh, to do things to your property. Now, I understand that causes people grief and concern because you know, they've made an investment in a certain area, that's their home, and now they're like, what can I do uh, with my property? Should I do anything with my property? Should I even spend that money if I wanted to do something? So mm -hmm. those concerns are valid. I can't stress enough at this point, the road is not gazetted. So um, even though that's a genuine question people have, at this point, it's not something that they need to be 100% relying on until something does get gazetted, which then, of course, brings into play the um, compulsory acquisition um, of those properties that would be in the pathway. Um, and yes, I was at the Transport for New South Wales meeting at Oakville on Wednesday night where a gentleman had this specific question and he said to me, what happens to my property? Um, he was an elderly gentleman and he said, so in 30 years, I probably won't be around anymore. So what happens in seven to eight to 10 years if I want to sell and, yeah. and go somewhere else for my retirement? And I said, it's absolutely a valid point. Um, and apparently there might be some criteria for early acquisition. I need to double check on that um, and see if that's possible. But what I'm reiterating is you don't you don't hear in the media um, a lot of negative stories or a lot of bad stories about the government ripping people off. The government don't do that. They make sure that people are fairly compensated for their land. Um, there'll be the odd case where someone does take the government to court because they believe they're entitled to more, um, but those are usually settled and, you know, the government then moves forward with its project plan. So um, I would reassure people that the government's not out to, to rip them off. If anyone is in that pathway of any infrastructure project like North um, West Connects or anything like that, they do get fairly compensated. 
Mm. No, it's a good point that you make and yeah. I think it's important for people to have an awareness, I suppose, that, and an education as to what's actually happening, what has happened and what's yeah. potentially going to happen as opposed to what hasn't happened. Um, right. So, yeah, I think also too um, in regards to the corridor, the Bills Line of Road Group, Corridor Action Group, they've got the website, so if anybody, uh, sorry, the Facebook page, so if mm -hmm. anybody wanted to go on site to that, they could um, have mm. a look at that and see what's going on in the community. But equally, yeah. you said that you are available, you're happy to be tagged in different things Absolutely. on Facebook and you're, yeah, yeah. you're very um, contactable to discuss those matters with the local yeah. residents. I'm happy for people to send me text messages, private messages on Facebook. Um, people message our Liberal Party page um, all the time, our Facebook page. It doesn't bother me, whichever that way they want to get in contact. Details are on the council website. Um, so, you know, pe feel free to contact me any way you want. Yeah, sure. And what is the council website whilst we're on that? Um, it's Hawkesbury. I think it's dot New South Wales dot gov dot au. I think it is. Yes, <laughs> that's okay. So we don't you get just... you to look yourself up that often. So no, I really don't look myself up that often. Um, <laughs> like to be honest, I do go onto the website quite a bit um, to access other documentation because they really do file and store things there really well. And someone says, "Oh, I, I want to know what the latest community survey results are," or um, "Where was that flood strategy document?" You know, they are really well um, stored on. Hawkesbury Council's website. It's actually run really, really well, that website, and it's an absolute wealth of information for people to go on there and find find things out. And it's updated all the time with what's going on. Great resource to have, and we'll certainly mm. let... Um, I'll put a link up on the, the web here just so that people have that later on. Um, and Dane yep. saying hello. Thank you. Hello, Hi, Dane. Dane. Good to hello. See you. <laughs> Excellent. Well, can I just say with the website, I'm just bringing up something on my phone to have a look at the dates. We actually have... Uh, right now some community consultation meetings um, booked in because part of since being elected, well, especially with our Fit for the Future strategy, which was to put the options of a rate rise to the community, we had to engage in quite heavy community consultation. Um, and we're actually doing some more of that coming up soon. And I've just got the dates here, if I can run through them quickly, Rachel, if that's okay. Absolutely, because um, the rate rise was next on my list to cover, actually. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so um, this the rate rise will probably be the hottest topic at these community, next lot round of community consultation meetings. But what I want to stress yeah. to people in saying these dates is the last round that we had, which was similar venues, we sometimes only got two or three people turning up. So when people are quite engaged on social media and they've got a lot to say, either being critical or praising council or councillors, um, we we really are trying to make sure that we're engaging with the community face-to-face, one-on-one. Our head staff and directors and general manager are coming along to these meetings to make themselves available. So please get along um, to these consultation meetings as much as you can. I'll just run through them very, very quickly. Excuse me, taking Absolutely. my eyes off the screen. Uh, Windsor is Wednesday the 6th of June, North Richmond the 7th, Glossodia is the 12th, Pitt Town the 14th, Courage on the 18th, Hollow Heights the 20th, Moralia the 21st and St Albans is Saturday the 23rd. So you can go onto Hawks Council's website or Facebook page and find those dates and head along to your local meeting, um, meet the councillors, meet the staff, if any concerns you have about any DAs on your property or anything like that, um, straight to the directors themselves. Yeah, sure. And in regards to the rate rises, is mm. there big rate rises on the horizon or what's the, the forecast there? Yeah, so IPART, um, which is the independent body that needs to agree to any council raising their rates above the rate peg, um, agreed this week uh, to raise Hawkesbury City Council's rates by 31.3% cumulative over the next three years. So what that means is that every year for the next three years, your rates will go up 9.5% um, plus uh, whatever rate pegging would be. And for the next financial year, that's pegged at 2.3%. So um, as of the 1st of July, when your rates come out again, you the whole of the Hawkesbury is going to have that increase. Now, um, there's no lie that all councillors didn't vote for this rate rise, and I've been um, quite vocal in making sure people know which councillors did and didn't vote for the rate rise and why. Um, mm -hmm. We are bound by the Local Government Act to uphold resolutions of council, so I have to be very careful what I say and how I say it because once a resolution does go through council, such as they're endorsing the rate rise, that isn't a policy of council that council laws need to support. Um, however, I can stick to the facts and say what I did or didn't do and why. So um, the four Liberal councillors did not support the current rate rise 
because it was based on a rating structure that we believe was inequitable to certain sectors of our community. Um, predominantly hit were people around Oaks or Moralia that it had a spike in their land valuations during the last round of um, the New South Wales Value General, General actually looking at land values again. Um, now, under the Local Government Act, which is where council has certain tools um, available to structure their rates, um, there's what's called a base rate. Now, a base rate can be is capped at 50%. So what that does, and then the rest, other 50% is based on the land value of the property. Um, the current council structure only capped the base rate at 30%, which meant 70% of people's rates were based on the land valuation. So uh, the four Liberals did fight in the Chamber to make, we wanted that uh, 50 cent base rate capped at the highest possible legal limit that it could be, yep. so that our residents who were facing higher land values um, had the highest proportion, well, the lowest proportion they possibly could to pay on rates based on their land value. So we were unsuccessful in putting that argument forward eight to four, um, and the 30% base rate um, went through. So we do not and still do not support that structure. We've had a range of briefings uh, or rating workshops since that day where the 12 of us have sat in a room with the staff and tried to see if we can find another way forward for a different structure. Uh, but unfortunately, we haven't come to a resolution in that regard. And as of the 1st of July, when the new rates come out, it'll still be based on that rating structure that was voted on um, last year. Um, so the, the SRV, so the special rate variation, which then comes into apply, well, basically the rate rise from the 1st of July um, will be based on a structure that I don't, that I voted against um, when it was implemented. So um, I know they're saying on average, it's only going to be around the $100 mark or so for most people. But when you're talking about averages, you're not talking about, you know, mm -hmm. your peak and your pits. You're talking about a, a, a few people in the middle. So there's going to be some significant um, people who are hit, you know, the people in Oakville who had their rates double overnight under the current restructure um, from $1,900 to $41 rate bills um, have now got the rate rise on top of that. Um, now, it's come out that uh, while we said that we wouldn't support this rate rise on this new structure, um, you know, there was always a case that we probably did have to increase the rating pool um, mm -hmm. of funds that we have by a certain amount. Um, but two thirds of our community throughout our previous consultations said that they did not support that option three, which was that 31.3% that went through. So two thirds did not support that. Um, although two thirds of the community also did support maybe some sort of a rise, which maybe there was option one, two and three. Option one was to stay the same. Option two was a small incremental rise and option three was your um, you know, gold plated option. So um, there could have been room for option two. Um, but again, I'm gonna be honest, we even though we consulted the community, went out to public exhibition, all of those sorts of things, we really didn't get back huge numbers from the community during that process um, on what they wanted us mm -hmm. to do. Um, so to me, moving forward as a councillor, um, and that's why I wanted to make sure I highlighted those dates of those next round of consultations coming up is because community engagement is extremely important to me. Um, but I find that people sometimes on the whole don't get engaged till it hits them personally which is the way life works, that's a normal thing. So part of my role moving forward is to make sure people can get as engaged as they possibly can um, in their local government and what their council is doing and what's going on so that they are informed and that they can actually have a say. Yeah, I think it's a really good point. I mean, the message I'm getting from you is that to get involved, to go to the meetings, to have your say, to have a discussion, mm. an open discussion yeah. that can yeah. be constructive because at the yeah. end of the day, you're a mum and mm. you're a person just like yeah. all of us and we That's all right. have different personalities and lives and families yeah. outside exactly. of our work. So yeah. you're just there doing your very best that you can do for the community and you're in exactly. support of the community and um, and yeah. available. So we do appreciate that and it's great that you've highlighted those dates. I'll try and put up a link to the website Excellent. so that people have that. Yeah. Mo's saying hello, yeah. he's on the line. How are you, Mo? I've um, Mo, was that? Mo in, Hi, Mo. Yeah, <laughs> Mo's... Um, with Mo in the Feng Shui co uh, conference in China a few years oh, back. Oh, excellent. So I, hope he's, I hope he's doing well. Uh, we'll Fantastic. catch up with him again soon. I'm going down to That's the conference great. in Melbourne recently. Oh, cool. oh, we're just about to, to the next weekend or the weekend after Wonderful. that. So, great. yeah. But, um, no, it's been really good to talk to you today, Sarah, and I think it's sort Thank of, you. Um, you know, uh, unpacked a few myths possibly and yeah. also 
people know the real Sarah Richards and where mm -hmm. you're at in uh, what you're doing for council. And I think too, um, in regards to the community, it's so important to get mm -hmm. involved, um, put it your is. hand up and just interact. And I'm sure Sarah would uh, love to hear from you and help you with any Absolutely. submissions that you have. The date yep. is the 1st of June for the corridor to get those Correct. in, is that right? 1st of and June, then, absolutely. Yep. yep. And then um, if we look at doing any other submissions or if you've got any other comments in regards to what's going on in the community, definitely get in contact with Sarah. If they wanted to contact you, how would they do that other than Facebook? Yep, um, all our details as counsellors are on the um, council uh, website. So if you just go Brilliant. to the Hawkesbury Council website, look up counsellors, they're there. Um, people are also free to contact me on Facebook, private message me um, on my Sarah Richards private page, or they can also go to Hawkesbury Liberal Team um, where I have a page as well. And all councillors were also given a page um, up and running through council. So Councillor Sarah Richards is another Facebook page um, they can go to, um, email me, call me, whatever they want to do. Um, I'm available to chat all the time. No, that's terrific. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Sarah. I really appreciate no it. And thank you for everybody being on the line and saying hello. I think Margaret featured earlier um, and we've Hi, lost Margaret. her off the, the back end. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for the opportunity. Awesome. I appreciate uh, you, you um, giving me this chance to come on and have a chat. I think it's a great thing what you're doing and, um, you know, bringing on different aspects of the community onto your show just to have a chat and highlight these sorts of things. So thank you, Rachel. No, you're most welcome. And that's what I'm all about too. And we've got a common bond in that regard, community and advocacy Absolutely. in the area and just want to help yeah. and get the best outcome for everybody. So thanks that's for right. joining me on this episode. Thank you to everybody. And we will catch no up with you on the next episode. See you, Sarah. Great. Thank Bye, you. People. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking time out listening to today's episode. If you have any questions on the process of buying, selling, leasing or strata management, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and I'd really appreciate it if you could spread the word by liking and sharing this episode with your family and friends. I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and I look forward to catching up with you on the next episode of the Drive Home to Hawkesbury.